Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Somos Church. Um, I'm here with my friend, my brother, Eric. What's going on with you, man? How are you? What's up? What's up, guys? Nice to see everyone here. Good to be here. Uh, just chilling out, ready for Tuesday nights. It's awesome, bro. I'm loving it. I think you got. I think you got something to tell everybody, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, don't forget this Thursday, Legacy Nights. You do not want to miss it. It's culture. It's our Come culture. On. It's Somos culture. You do not want to miss it. Oh, it's yeah. over Zoom at 7 p.m. A great way to meet me each and every single person of the of the Somos Church and get connected and learn more about. Uh, what we're doing as a church and um, you do not want to miss it uh, great information great uh, source to just stay connected and uh, love on each other and get to know each other so yeah yeah that's just yeah and single ladies it's a great place to meet eric he's really awesome he's out <laughs> there i can give you his phone number if you want we can talk about that later but also on sundays we have uh we have our church services we got 10 30 we got the 12 p.m. and we got the 6 p.m. So we really didn't leave you any excuses to miss out. So you've got to find a way to get in there because it's just a really awesome message, really good time to spend in worship and prayer. And we have the live chats where you can connect with people in the church as we're listening to the message. So I really encourage you guys to check that out. And I also want to remind you guys after the 1030 service at 1115, we have Somos Kids. And that's the culmination of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And I think we're just so all proud of Somos Kids and what it's turning into. So we encourage you to check that out. Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. And if you guys want to see me on the chat there, I'll be there at the probably 12. Because that's the time I'll be there. Advertising oh, that'll be the time itself, I'll be waking man. up. Come on. I, I. <laughs> all right. And then let's, uh, let's go into giving. Uh, we are a generous church, guys. Um, we give our 10% no matter what, and um, God gives us back in plenty more than just 10%. Uh, God yeah. God is faithful with with you and, and your finances, so uh, so we should be the same, and we should be generous with that. And down in the link below, hopefully, uh, you'll see the, the website, uh, somoschurch.cc slash give. And if not, you could go through the Cash App, which I personally use, and it's much easier for me, and I just love it because it's just True. simple clicks. Uh, it's uh, Somos Church uh, EP, I believe. And if not, it's in the link below. If I'm wrong, then correct me. It's right there. All right. We'll put it right, <laughs> right there. there. Right there. Or, or here. Or there. Here, Somewhere. There. It's going to be on the Somewhere. screen. You promise it's going to be on that. the screen. Yeah, let's get that it. That feel might cut let's... that out because we might not be doing worship. <laughs> Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> no worship. <laughs> Welcome, Somos, to another midweek gathering here at Somos Church. We are so excited that you are joining us in this beautiful Tuesday, burning hot weather here in El Paso. But thank you so much for joining us here at Somos Church. We are in a super fun season here at our church. We have started a brand new series called There Is More. And man, it's been super incredible, challenging, and en encouraging. Uh, so if you haven't watched uh, some of the other messages on this new season, you need to go back and check them out because I believe they're gonna bless you, they're gonna encourage you, they're gonna challenge you. So go back and watch those. But uh, you know, this Sunday actually, uh, past Sunday, we uh, talked about the seasons that we encounter as we are going for more, right? And in those seasons that we encounter were the season of crushing, the season of uncomfortability, and the season of conquering. I believe there's different seasons and stages that we hit as we're in our journey for more in our lives, right? But one of the things that's super important, doesn't matter what season you're, season you're in, doesn't matter what you're facing or encountering, one of the things that I believe is so crucial for our lives as we are doing this lifestyle of more, right? Because I believe there's more for us in every single area possible. And one of the things that I believe is super important for us to encounter that more or for us to have health as we're encountering more, that is our friendships. 
our friendships. Come on, look at someone around you and tell them, that's right, friendships. There is more for your relationships today. Relationships, they're so valuable. They are so important. They are so crucial for our lives. And it's interesting, right? Because when we were little, right, and we went to school for the very first time, we were so nervous about men who who, who is going to be my friend, right? Like that was this, I don't know if you remember, but it was one of the scariest things going to elementary or, you know, just to school in general, like, especially if it was a brand new school, it was like so terrifying. Like, who's going to be my friend? I'm there by myself. I don't want to be by myself. That would cause a lot of insecurity and anxiety, right? Like what's going to happen? And, and it's funny, right? Like in our upbringing, that was such a important thing, our friendships, our relationships. And once we grow older, right? I believe that we start becoming more independent in many different areas, but also in the area of our friendships, right? We don't feel the same way about our friendships, you know, if you're a little bit older out of college, in college or older, right? We don't feel the same way, the same way we did back in elementary or a brand new school, right? Why? Because we're more independent. We've learned that we can do life by ourselves and, and, and it's not the same. So we become more independent in the way we approach relationships, right? Typically what I've seen happen, I don't know if you've seen this as well, but you know, you see someone getting married and it's almost like society loses them, right? Why? Because marriage is beautiful, right? Uh, you, you, you hopefully, and I pray that you would marry your friend, right? It's so important. Friendship is so important in a marriage, right? And if you marry uh, your friend, right? Your best friend, it's super fun. It's exciting. So it's almost like, man, why more friends? I have my best friend and I'm, you know, married, you know, we live together and, and life is fun, right? But we isolate ourselves from other friendships, right? Uh, the same thing happens uh, when, when we see someone dating, especially young people. Oh my goodness. If you are young and you're dating or if you're single and you're thinking or wanting to get into a relationship, I beg you, don't make this mistake because we see this all the time, right? We see a young couple, they start dating and they just are with one another 24-7 every single day and they isolate completely from other friends. Now, I believe that's such a mistake because you always need friends in your life. Come on, even when you're dating, you want to date and also have friends around you, right? You want to share your life with people. And we'll dive into why that's so important. But man, if you're single, please don't isolate yourself from your friends. We see this happen all the time. And maybe you've experienced it at some point, right? That you experience a breakup and then you have no friends because you made some decisions, right? So the thing here is either you go through a breakup or not, that you always have your good a group of friends and choosing the right group of friends. But friendships, they are so, so valuable. As God is calling us for more in finances, more in our purpose, more in our careers, in our businesses, in every single area of our lives, right? There is more for you and for me. And one of the important things and this lifestyle that God has for us of more is our friendships. I believe friendships will help us to get to those stages of more in our lives. I think friendships help you get there. I believe friendships help you maintain, you know, whatever you got access for. And, and, and friendships, they're just fun, right? And we all need friends. No one likes to do life alone even our friends that are introverts. We all need people in our lives. And, you know, we see this even in God's heart, right? Friendships are so important. When Jesus came to the earth and he started his ministry, one of the first things he did, okay? One of the first things he did was, I'm not gonna do my ministry alone. I need some people to do life with me. And literally when he started his ministry, right before he started his ministry, he went on the lookout for a group of friends, right? We call them disciples, but I call them friends, right? 
people that he would do life with 24-7, people that were on the same mission, people that had the same objective, people that were doing literally community 24-7. The first things, one of the first things that Jesus did was, I'm not going to do life alone. I need some people. And he literally, the way he went about this was like, hey, you want to be my friend? Come follow me. Hey, leave everything. Come follow me. Let's do life together. And I believe we need that boldness in our lives of saying, if I'm going to be successful in my business, if I'm going to be successful in my marriage, if I'm going to be successful, you know, financially and all of the different areas in my life, who am I going to do life with? It's so important. It's so crucial. Jesus led this way, his whole ministry. He did it around people. Now, not perfect people, not people that were, you know, fully for him. You know, we all know uh, in those group of friends that he had, he had one that was going to betray him. He had a whole lot of them that were going to deny him, you know. So let's be, you know, a little bit easy on the people that we choose to be our friends, right? Sometimes we have some standards that are so intense about how our friends need to look like, how our friends need to be, and we need to share all the same things. And I believe that's not the case. I believe that in diversity, in the the different opinions, there is more, you know, there, there is more bondage, there's more unity, there's more to be unified because there's so many different things that we can share and talk about and explore together. So church, God has more for you. And I believe the way we're going to reach for that more is with friendships. You need friendships in your life. I need friendships in my life. And I really want to challenge us because I know in a certain way, this is such a basic concept, right? Like, sir, you're going to be talking about friendships. But think about it. Think about it. It's so important, right? Now, if we're here talking, right, and I were to tell you, hey, you have a dream, right, to be more successful in, in, in your career, in your school, uh, in a relationship, in your status, in a car, house, whatever, right? We were having this conversation of more. What, what more do you want in your life, right? What are you reaching for today? Right, and we would sit down and talk about this. You, I know that you would be telling me, you know, like I am doing this, that, the other. I have these plans. I've set up my life this way. I've poured so much energy in this, that, or the other, and 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 and, and you are full force going for it, right? I believe that we need the same energy the same planning, the same intentionality when it comes to our friendships. Friendships are typically the last thing we put on our list. Now, I believe it's such a valuable thing to have. We need to be intentional with our friendships. How many times a week are you going to reach out to some people, right? Now, you have people already in your life, I assume, I hope so. And if you don't, we're right here. That's what a church is for, for friendships, for community. But we all typically have our, our, our group of friends, right? The people that we talk to, one or two, whoever that is, right? What I want to challenge you today is that we need to expand our capacity for friendships. There is more for you. There are more friendships available to you today. Here at Somos Church, I believe that every single time that we gather together physically online is an opportunity for us to meet our new best friend. Culture shows us that you need one, two, or that's typically what happens, right? You have your one best friend, two best friends, you have your circle, and that's it. No one gets in, right? Like, we have walls around our friendship and it's our little group, it's our little clique and no one gets in. Well, you are missing out on a whole lot more in your life. You want to put down those walls and invite more people into your circle. As awkward as that is, as weird as it is, we need to bring walls down in order for people to come 
and for us to learn from them and for them to learn from us. And I believe life is just better and better with more and more people in our lives. You know, I love this scripture in Matthew 22, 34. It's one of my favorite scriptures in, in the whole Bible, right? Because here, uh, a, a, a religious leader comes to Jesus challenging him questioning him like, hey, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest, the most important commandment, right? And, and I love his answer because in a way, I feel like Jesus is summarizing everything that matters into this concept, okay? So Matthew 22, um, 24, uh, 34, and it says, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, come on, lean into this. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is Equally, equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments, on these two commandments. Come on, Jesus is saying the most important thing in life is for us to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind greatest commandment. What blows me away about this commandment and what Jesus is saying here is that God is the most important, right? And then Jesus says the second commandment is as equally, equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus is saying loving God and loving people, they are at the same level of importance, Come on, Jesus in a way is putting in the same level God and people. Isn't that crazy and wild? Like, God, are you kidding me? Is this real? How are you going to put people in the same level of importance as you? But I believe that God knows what he's talking about. He knows that people are super important. Now, this is the category. This is the standard that God gives us. Uh, as far as friends of his people, he just says, hey, love your neighbor. Who's around you? Love them. Who's around you? Love them. Build relationship with them. Do life with them. Call them once in a while. Do Zoom calls every now and then. Come on, date. If, if you're married and there's another friend or co-worker or person that you know, like, hey, let's do a Zoom call. Let's FaceTime. Let's get to know one another better and better church. I pray that here at Somos, we would be a church that is so rooted in friendships that when people come into our church, they see a picture of just a beautiful community friendships, not little cliques and little groups because then people feel left out, but that people walk into an environment and they say, man, I can belong here. I can be a part of this. And that we as a church, we would constantly be on the lookout of, hey, who can I connect? Who can I talk to? Who can I reach out? Who is my neighbor that I can love on, that I can do life with? So most church, it's time. We've been in this COVID quarantine, not knowing what's going to happen way too long. I believe it's time today to reach out to someone, to make a phone call, to send some texts, not only to the people that you are already used to, but come on, let's stretch our faith into the unknown, into the season of uncomfortability, because it is going to be uncomfortable to reach out to some people that maybe we don't know really well. It's going to take a lot of uncomfortability for us to be a little bit vulnerable.
You know, especially here in our city in El Paso, I believe that we grew up with such a mindset of like, we're strong and we're always strong. And it's hard to put all walls down and to say, hey, I need people. I need to reach out to some, someone. I cannot be waiting here for someone to reach out to me. I'm going to reach out to someone today. I'm going to make an investment today the same way I would invest thousands of dollars in my education, in my business, in my career, and you know, in my dating relationships. I am going to invest in my friendships because they are so vital, valuable, and crucial for the development of the promises of God that He has for us. Now, don't just choose, you know, ram that randomly, right? Like, who is God bringing into our lives? You know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, they asked me a little bit to talk about friendships and the importance of friendships, and they asked me, hey, what is the key? What is the key to, uh, you know, building new friendships, new relationships? And I am no master at this. You know, I'm still figuring that out and I'm still trying, right? But one thing that I believe is so key in order for us to have new friendships and better friendships, right? Because there is more. We don't need to settle. We can believe and have expectation and faith for more, right? But one of the things that I believe are so crucial is for us to be so vulnerable and transparent. So vulnerable and transparent. You know, it's kind of hard to put ourselves out there fully. But if we don't do that, how can you build the trust that it takes to build a good and healthy friendship? Come on, I invite you today. Let's put our walls down. Let, 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 let's, let's put our guard down and allow God to bring friendships to our lives. It's crazy and interesting to think that out of the 12 disciples that Jesus had, the 12 people that he chose to do life with, one of them was the one that he was going to betray him. Now, Jesus knew it in advance that one day Judas was going to betray Jesus. And even then, even Jesus knowing this guy's going to betray me one day, what Jesus did was that he put his walls down and he invited him into his circle and he allowed him to be there to the point of Judas was the treasurer. Judas was the one who took care of the money. If you were to tell me today, hey, someone's going to betray you, can you put him as the one in charge of the money? Uh, I, I would be like, uh, no, I don't think so, you know, and I hope that you and I share the same sentiment, right? But it's crazy that Jesus wanted to set an example for us of saying, no matter what, let's put our walls down. Let's develop new friendships. You don't have to go through the motions in life just doing life alone. You need God in your life. And that's the most important thing. But Jesus said, the second commandment is as important. You need people. You can't wait to Sunday for people. You can't wait for Tuesday for people. Come on, you cannot wait for Thursdays for people. We need people in our lives every single day to cheer us up, to pray, encourage, encourage, challenge, whatever that is. But I pray today that today you would be inspired and challenged to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to reach out to some people. I need friends in my life. I need a community in my life. And today, as random as it is, but if you want to, you know, like talk to someone, this number right here is just for you. You can text and we can talk and we can get to know one another a little bit better because we all need people in our life. And we always need more and more people in our lives. Life with more of God gets better and better. Life with more people gets better and better. Come on, church. God is calling us for more and that more requires more friendships. So I pray that today you would be challenged and encouraged to know that there are friendships available to you. Just take the first step. I want to close us in prayer today. And as I do, I, I do recognize that friendships sometimes are hard and we've been betrayed and we've been heartbroken. And, you know, we've experienced a whole lot of different things. So don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not just being Mr. Positive here. Like, hey, yeah, you know, I recognize there's some challenges when it comes to having friends. 
but the rewards outweigh, really outweigh the challenges and the hardships of friendship. So put yourself out there. Don't do life alone. Reach out, text this number, join our legacy nights and really here soon in August, we're going to start connect groups and you just need, you need more friendships, new friendships in your life. We all do. So I want to pray for us today. God, we thank you today that in you, we find a friend. We thank you that in you, we find everything, God. And I just thank you today for every single person watching this. I pray that if there's someone here that feels, feels lonely, alone, God, that you would send the right people to them. God, I pray that they would know that we are not just saying words. We're really here for people. And if they feel alone, isolated, depressed, or anxious, for them to reach out, for them to send that text, that first step, so that they could develop a new friendship in their life that's going to walk close, close with them. God, I pray for every person that's been betrayed or heard by friendships before. God, I pray that you would heal them and they, they would know that there's hope in friendships, that their bad experiences, they don't determine all the experiences that they can have, God. I pray that as a church, we would be more open for more and more new friendships, that we would be intentional in our friendships. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Somos, I love you this Thursday night. You cannot miss our legacy nights. Let's continue to do life as a community and to build the legacy that God has for us today. Also, this Sunday, we're going to continue talking about there is more. So invite some people and let's have a blast. Love you, Somos.